welcome or welcome back to my channel where we talk all about tech and travel. I'm here in Mexico with Maddie, who is also a Google software engineer, and we are going to be asking her some questions, learning about her journey in tech, and for any of you that are interested in pursuing the same career path, she is going to take us on a beautiful journey of how she got into tech and hopefully inspire some of you that are also interested in a similar career path. And if you have any questions, make sure to leave those in the comments below. We'll answer those. If you're new to the channel, we talk all about tech, so make sure if you're interested in tech and travel, then subscribe, turn on the bell notifications, and like the video because Google engineers have worked hard for those buttons. So. <laughs> yeah. Awesome, thank you so much for having me. I'm super, super excited. Yay. So, Maddie, why don't you tell us a little bit about where you are now and then we'll talk about how you got there and your journey. So, hi, I'm Maddie. I'm currently a sophomore at Google. I work in California in the United States in Mountain View, so Google's headquarters. In terms of my path here, I did my bachelor's at MIT. I did a couple internships along the way, including at places like Microsoft, IBM, Amazon, and Morgan Stanley. I did some undergraduate research and yeah, this is my new grad job, so I'm super excited to be here and super excited talk about it. Yeah, she still calls herself a new grad, even though it's been a year and a bit. I don't want to be a non-new grad until I'm able to actually get tired of free Google food. That's when I will call myself not a new grad. Then you're never going to be not a new grad. I mean, I wouldn't be tired of free food ever. Fair enough, fair enough. Yeah. That's the idea. Tell us a little bit about what you work on at Google. So I am in the Google search product area. So my team makes appointment scheduling features for doctors and appointments and patients which means that if you want to book, let's say, a doctor's appointment or if you want to check to see if your insurance covers a specific treatment, you would use some of our features on Google search. Yeah, Google search is my favorite product. <laughs> I like Gmail, so you know, it's the most yeah. switch teams. Oh, okay, <laughs> don't tell my team, don't tell my team. I love them. <laughs> what was the Google interview process like for you as a new grad? Google's interview process, I think, can be a bit more time intensive, I would say, for new grads in general than some other companies. But what happened was I first applied online, passed the resume screen, and after that they had me do a phone coding challenge and it's something called a snapshot which is basically where you rank preferences for your teams. After that, they had us do another interview and then the on-site. So the on-site is basically when in, well, pre-pandemic times, they fly you in person to headquarters, or usually I guess for the US, to Mountain View, where they have you do four technical interviews and one behavioral interview, and there's like a lunch thing that's more chill. So after that, they take all of your stuff and they deliver it, and then they'll give you a decision then. After that, if you make it and get an offer, then they will let you interview with a couple of teams within Google to see which team that you want to pref and if that team prefs you, that's how they determine which team that you will be working for. Interesting, so I didn't realize as a new grad you get to interview with different teams and then decide which one you want to go to. Yeah. That's super cool. Yeah, so obviously you don't get all the choice in the world, but remember this snapshot that I talked about? They will pick a couple of teams they believe would be a good fit for your experience based on that. And then if those teams have any headcount, if they have openings, then those teams' managers will reach out to you to schedule a Google Meets call to see if you would be a good fit to work for them. Yeah, that's a little different for how it works for non-new grads where there's headcount for a team and you just go to that team. <laughs> so that's super cool. Okay, and before Google, what was your journey in tech? You just mentioned you worked for like almost every single fang company <laughs> over here. Make Vanga, I don't yeah. know what it's called nowadays. My journey was, I guess a pretty, I guess the more conventional one I would say. Like traditional. A, traditional. So yeah, I got my bachelor's at MIT. I actually, funny story, thought I was gonna study biology for most of my first year, but I ended up switching computer science. Got my bachelor's, um, did like a bunch of internships throughout the summers and winters during MIT. I was a software development engineering intern for companies like Amazon, Microsoft, IBM, Morgan Stanley, and I did undergraduate research. So I specifically worked in this department at MIT called MIT D Lab. D Lab stands for Development Lab. Essentially what they do is they try to create products and code that helps people in developing countries. My particular project was I made a server that uses uh, Bayesian machine learning models to help patients in rural India detect and treat uh, pulmonary disease faster. Yeah, that's something that really speaks to my personal values. And again, um, you'll see that kind of healthcare, for example, like I make appointment scheduling systems for Google, right? Healthcare is something that has been really a passion of mine and something that I've tried to incorporate into as many 
personal projects, as many internships as possible. So yeah, I did internships in undergraduate research at MIT. Afterward, I went to Google, and that is my current journey so far. Looking forward to what happens in the future. Oh, that's really cool and inspiring. How about MIT? Did you find that getting a computer science degree in general, or going to MIT specifically, <laughs> was helpful in getting your job at Google? Yeah, I would say definitely. For coding, at least, you obviously need to have confidence because there's you know technical interviews. So what I'm saying is you cannot just say I went to MIT and then get a job based on that. That doesn't yeah. work. But it does definitely helps. I know a lot of people based on the DMs I've been getting. The biggest barrier is just like getting your recruiter to like read your resume and to to pass you to the next round or not. And I think having a degree from a school like MIT, to be frank, can help open that particular door. But even if you have that name on your resume, you still have to prove your Yourself, basically, you still have to pass all those technical interviews, and no matter what school you go to, if you can't pass the technical interviews, that's not going to help you get the job. Yeah, definitely. To summarize, it's useful to have a degree because your resume gets seen, perhaps a little more if you don't have any kind of certification, but it's not necessary. Either way, you still got to pass the technical interviews. Yes, I will say that I do have co workers that I know didn't have a degree. I will say I think they had more personal projects and other various endeavors, and that did help. But I think the vast majority do have degrees. But yeah, there's I did definitely other that. paths as well. I think it definitely, like, a degree doesn't really matter. It's just yeah. what you do, what you make of your. your yeah, like my degree didn't teach me too much. I still had no idea what I was doing. Work experience is way more valuable than anything. Stack Overflow Google also really helps. Oh, honestly, <laughs> yeah. No, I would not be in this career without those, of course. Imagine writing Google and Stack Overflow without having Google or Stack Overflow. I know. So do you think that your internships were beneficial in getting your full-time role as well, or would you have found the same route? I think internships are valuable for getting full-time roles, not just because of what you can put in your resume, but also in terms of the skills they teach you. For example, I think a lot of my classes were more theory based and didn't really cover there are some classes that did cover the actual like software engineering tricks and I guess principles that you do apply in everyday coding but not too many of them so I think definitely having that practical experience is very useful in basically making you a better well-rounded candidate mm -hmm. and making not even just the application process but making work at a full-time role easier especially to start with. I have talked to some of my friends who didn't really do as many internships and I think sometimes there is a learning curve. I'd recommend that if your school has a built-in summer session or anything where you are able to intern, I would definitely try at least to explore that option. I think there can be no bad results from doing an internship from a company that will teach you something. And for all the aspiring software engineers out there, what advice would you give them for software engineering in general, but also for getting into a big tech company? I think in general, something that I really regret doing that I want to make sure other people don't do is when I was a uh, first year at university, I didn't end up applying to basically any software engineering jobs because I was afraid, you know, my resume had nothing software engineering mm -hmm. related. I felt unprepared. I felt like I had to polish, polish, and I felt like I had to get more experience. However, I think that is something that is pretty common, especially when you're young in your career. And I think that it is actually quite not good because the, the cliche, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. So Gretzky, I, Michael Scott. Yes, yes. So I think that what I would tell people is just apply for things. The worst they can do is say no. Like There really is no blacklist or whatever for software engineering companies. Even if you do not well one year, you can still apply the next year and they're not going to hold that against you. And I think if I had first year me in front of me, I would tell her definitely don't be afraid to just throw your resume out there and see what happens. Because again, first year me definitely was too shy and too afraid to even try to talk to recruiters and try to get my resume out there. I think specifically to get in a big company, what you have to have I think is more patience because a lot of the companies that are smaller, their recruitment processes tend to be a bit more concise and you get to answer quicker. However, for companies, I'll say specifically for Google, it takes a long, long time because I mentioned previously there's so many different steps. So I think just being patient and making sure to follow up with your recruiter helps a lot. I'll say for me, my recruiter was amazing, but because the process itself took a long time, I was of course nervous at times that maybe like I got rejected and they just didn't tell me. However, I think just having constant communication with your recruiter or whoever is handling your application can be good on both sides because I've also had companies that gave me verbal offers and then took a while to give actual letter 
And once I reached out to the recruiter and mentioned, hey, by the way, it's been a couple weeks and I know you promised me this offer, they just immediately gave it to me. So what I would say is if you want to get into a big company, something that helps a lot is just being in good communication with all of the moving parts of the process. I guess the second thing that you should keep in mind, I think big companies, much more so than some small companies, definitely prioritize those I guess typical data structures and algorithms questions that you, you know, for example, lead code or hacker rank. So I think for those companies, it helps a lot to do a lot of lead code and to practice and whiteboard and all that. If you do enough lead code and you're a personable person, you can get into Google. You know, yeah, I think sure. it's just a matter of practicing and also being friendly. Yeah. I think that part's important as well because sure. the Googliness factor is important. If you do all the lead code problems that exist, I can't imagine you not getting it. <laughs> yeah, so I also say that in my opinion, there are very few people that can just automatically hear a question and know exactly how to solve it. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people don't realize that. And I think it's just really important to recognize that practice really, really makes a difference. I can say right now, as someone who hasn't done lead code in around a year, I don't know if I would be able to pass those interviews. Oh no, I wouldn't be able to. Probably not, definitely Yeah, <laughs> I even tell that to my manager all the time. I'm like, if I was interviewed again today, I would not pass my technical interview. <laughs> you know, because it's a thing you need to practice. It's a muscle and yeah, it definitely. gets weak if you don't practice it. Yeah, so. so definitely don't be discouraged. I know oftentimes when I haven't lead coded for a while and I get back into it, the first many problems are very hard, but just, you know, if you get through that, the activation energy, yeah. it really makes a difference in activation energy. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And just do all the easy ones first and then work your way up to the harder ones. I definitely would get discouraged if I try a hard one and oh, then yeah. fail miserably, as I definitely would. <laughs> but you know, you do the easy ones and then you feel good about it, and then you do the medium, and then, yeah. Okay, thank you so much, Maddie, for sharing your journey in tech and inspiring many people that are interested in the same career path. And Maddie is actually going to make a YouTube channel as well. If you're interested in following her journey, I'm going to put the link for that below. And if you have any more questions, make sure you leave those in the comments below. We'll answer those for you. And we're actually going to film a Q&A together as well. So make sure you're subscribed if you're interested in that. And as always, you know, like the video and turn on the bell notifications if you're interested in more tech and travel content. And thank you guys for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Bye!